Hey guys, we are back with some more Wolfsburg Wolves franchise mode, and in this one, we're going to continue the simulation. And now one thing I forgot to point out in the last episode is that uh, we are not the only 8-0 team, as you can see here. Buffalo is also 8-0, and we are the only teams in the NHL that are still completely undefeated. Now the Vancouver Canucks are 6-0-2, however, they're not 8-0-0. Like ourselves in the Buffalo Sabres. So, this is a battle of the undefeated teams. And whoever <laughs> loses, obviously loses that title. And we will be left with one. So, we're going to go into this slow sim. And see what happens. Here we go. First period. Goal by Artemi Panarin on Lukanen. Second period. Okay, we're going into it. Because this is a big game. It's uh, 9 and 0 or 8 and 1 on the line. Here we go. All right, here we go. Away game against the Buffalo Sabres in the third period. Point versus Eichel on the faceoff. Let's go. Eichel wins it back for Darlene. Uh, but Panera takes it away. He has to stay on side though, so Ristolina will take it for Buffalo. Reinhardt takes it from Darlene. Reinhardt in the zone. Back for Darlene. Ristolina. Reinhardt takes the shot. It gets blocked. Panarin over to Shiri. Shiri will take it in the zone. Back for Jones. Jones down low for Panarin. Panarin muscles it along. Gets it to Shiri. Shiri with the shot that goes wide of the net. Point behind the net. And it, that is stuck. But Point gets it back for Shiri. And Eichel will get it around the net for Darlene. Ristolainen will take it up for Buffalo. Reinhardt. To risk the line and butt, the Buffalo Sabres will go offside here. Second line out there now for both teams. Furland, Stasny, and Homer out there against Skinner, Middlestat, and Ogpozo. Face off one by number 27, which is Paul Stasny. Furland. Back for Kuleshov for Stasny. And I believe that was Furland in front right there. Couldn't pick it up, however. Homer down low for Stasny. Stasny battling with Middlestat. Middlestat wins it to Gargiulo for Skinner. And Skinner into the zone for Middlestat. Couldn't get the shot away. Middlestat has it again. Back to the point for number 30. Gargiulo. Down low for Middlestat. Back to Gargiulo. Gargiulo over to Skinner. Skinner with the shot that goes just wider than that. Looked like it was going in at this angle. Kuleshov takes it up. And he'll feed Furland. Tries to weave his way into the zone, but intercepted by Gargiulo as he winds up the round boards for Gouli. Who gets it to Okpozo. Okpozo to Broussard. Back for Ellie. And over and what a save by Corey Schneider. Jones up for Aho. Aho looks at his options. Tries to go back and does. Good job by him. Tatar. Back to the point for Jones. Ryan. For Brodine. For Jones. And Gargiulo will intercept that off a great passing play by the Wolfsburg Wolves. Asplund tries to take that shot, but it's blocked by Jones. Jones winds it around the boards for Brodine. Brodine does the same and back to Pajot for Tatar. As Jones will take that up for Wolfsburg. Goes all the way. And Boychuk will take for Buffalo. And Coleman gets it for Wolfsburg. It's Pajot. Tries to feed Coleman, but intercepted by Buffalo as Duclair the other way. Winds it around. Finds Bork. Bork battling with number 26 there. Duclair gets it over and gets it back to him. Dumped down low by Buffalo. Duclair. Over to Thompson. But Hamilton intercepts. As he gets it up to Steen. With 5-10 remaining in the third. And that'll be cleared out. First line out there once again. Panera, Point, and Shiri against Reinhardt, Eichel, and Nylander. Face off one by Point. Back for DeHaan. Over to Point. Point can't win it back from Ristolainen. Ristolainen will send Reinhardt on his way into the zone. 4 7 remaining here in the third. Eichel to Nylander. Back to Eichel. Eichel looking for space. Finds Nylander, I believe. And Schneider with the great save to keep the 1-0 lead 
over Buffalo. Verland, Stasny, and Homer out against Skinner, Middlestat, and Okpozo. Face off one by Middlestat. Dalene over to Okpozo. Middlestat over to Ristolainen. Middlestat has that again. Over to Skinner. They can't get anything going. They're all in their passing wings. Middlestat for Dalene. Dalene finds Skinner on the boards. Middlestat. Switches up with him, and Okpozo with the snipe off the pass. I believe that was Casey Middlestat behind the net. And with 1.47 remaining, the Buffalo Sabres have tied it up. And we are potentially going to an overtime here, or looking at a uh, disastrous comeback by the Buffalo Sabres, or, or your Wolfsburg Wolves could get one back here, but they would have to work quickly. For that, Okpozo's first goal of the season, and yeah, that was middle stat behind the net, and just a perfect pass on the tape of Kyle Okpozo. And yeah, that is, yeah, that's that's gonna be a goal nine times out of ten. <laughs> so, eh, what you gonna do? Tatar, Aho, and Ryan out there against Reinhardt, Eichel, and Nylander. Eichel will win that face off from Aho. Nylander gets crushed. By number 26 of Jonas Brodin as Eichel winds it around the net as number 10 will get that up for Tatar. Tatar loses it to Dalene, but he hooks him, I believe, and that will be a power play for the Buffalo Sabres as Tomas Tatar heads to the box. <laughs> not, not looking good here. For your Wolfsburg Wolves as they are on the power play now for the end of this game. That, Yep, that is a hook and call. So Steen and Pickles out there against Skinner, Middlestat, and Brassard. Come on, boys. There you go. Myers. Could not get it from Skinner. Gajulo over to Brassard. Boychuk back to Brassard. Brassard with the shot, and he tries to clean up the garbage, but could not. Middlestat back to Gargiulo. Middlestat to Brassard. And that is poked out of the zone by Wolfsburg. Skinner. Regarjulo. Finds Skinner once again. And the Buffalo Sabres are offside. Furland and Pajo out there now. Against Skinner, Middlestat, and Brassard. 24 seconds remaining in the third. Face off one by Buffalo as Skinner will take it over. Gets it to Brassard. Brassard with the shot low. Looking for a rebound as Furland will take that up for Wolfsburg. Into the zone. Furland takes the shot. And a great save by Lucan and is now four on four as a penalty on Buffalo is being called. Number 37, Casey Middlestat heads to the box. Let's see what happened here. As Middlestat. Uh, I didn't quite see what happened there. That will be a slashing call on Middlestat. As we now have a four on four for the remainder of the period. And if needed, overtime. For the next minute 25. So here we go. Pushed by. Number 20 on Buffalo, and that'll cause Buffalo to win the faceoff, but they go offside. <laughs> Naren Point, Brodine, and Hamilton out there now. Five seconds remaining, Brodine to Panarin. Back for Brodine. The shot, and uh, not the shot, the dumping, I suppose, by <laughs> Jonas Brodine, and we are headed to overtime against the Buffalo Sabres. Both teams hanging on for their lives for their perfect record. Overtime against the Buffalo Sabres, trying to hang on to our perfect record. 8-0-0, looking to make it 9-0-0, but so are the Buffalo Sabres. And uh, Tatar and Middlestat in the box, so we have three on three. Point versus Eichel on the faceoff. Let's get it going. Come on, boys. And Eichel wins the faceoff. Nylander gets it from Ristolainen, over to Ristolainen, and Ristolainen takes that shot. And that looked like it was going in, but a great save by Schneider. Ristolainen takes the shot, and it goes in. And it's going to be the win for the Buffalo Sabres, who are now 9-0. And Wolfsburg will have to settle for the point, as they are now 8-0-1. Alright, so that was unfortunate. 8-0-1, but still a fantastic start to the season. So, let's get the rest of the month underway. And then we'll check out the stats and everything afterward. And maybe even send out the scout. <laughs> you know, I, but I, I usually like to do that around January. I forgot in the Islanders series the other day. I sh probably should have done that. But 
oh well. <laughs> uh, 5-4 overtime victory against the Carolina Hurricanes. 3-1 win against the Vancouver Canucks. Okay, so you followed up with the first regulation loss of the season against the Penguins. 5-2 loss. And there you go. 6-2 win against the New York Islanders. 11-1-1 of the season so far. Wolves, no complaints at all. Let's keep it going. There you go. A 5-4 win against Nashville. Uh, Dahan for a third. Saboka and a fourth. No, thank you. And 3-1 win against the Rangers. That is looking phenomenal. 13-1-1 one one are your Wolfsburg Wolves. Let's keep it going. Anaheim. 8-4-3. They're pretty good. Uh, John gabriel Pajo has been injured with a sore hip until November 24th. All right, let's place him. Not the greatest injury, but he is on the fourth line, so kind of replaceable here. Cody Eakin getting in there for the first time this season. I don't believe Pajo was anywhere. Uh, he was on the penalty kill, but we'll leave Eakin there. Eakin's should be solid, at least, on the penalty kill for the time that we need him. There you go. 4-3 win against Anaheim. A uh, 4 nothing win against the Minnesota Wild. Keep it going, boys. 12-4-1. Dallas is good, too. 3-2 to two win against the Dallas Stars. Oh, my. Oh, my. 5-2 loss against the Tampa Bay Lightning. There's our first regulation loss in two weeks there. Uh, as we are without J.G. Pajot, but uh, he is back now. And we are 16-2-1. There's really no reason to stop here whatsoever. So we're just going to put Pajot back in, and we will continue the simulation. Not much else to do. Boston, 4-3 victory. Very nice. Winnipeg, come on. Oh, they're really good. They're really good. It'd be great if we could beat them. Oh, 8-2. <laughs> I mean, I, I thought that was going to be a close game, but apparently not. 8-2 victory against the Winnipeg Jets and your Wolfsburg Wolves are 18-3-1 at the end of October. That is absolutely insane. 30, 37 points. And we lead... Oh, well, I was about to say lead the league, but oh my God, the Buffalo Sabres. 20-0-3 <laughs> are the Buffalo Sabres. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> anyway, let's check out the points real quick. We'll go in depth with, with it, but I at least want to see the progress so far. So, point with 21 points, Panarin 20, Homer 19, Hamilton 18, Steen with seven. Steen with 17. Really, on the fourth line. Must be getting a lot of power play points. Yeah, seven. He's pretty solid there on the power play. That means 10 even strength points for Alex Steen on the fourth line. Pretty good. Uh, Michael Furland with 17, Aho with 16, having a great year so far. Shiri 13, Jones 13, Kuleshov 12. He sl slowed down a little bit, but he's getting a lot of shots towards that 70. I believe that is second on our team, only to Homer. Yeah, that is second on our team. And then Stasny with 12, Tatar with 9, Coleman, Pickles with 9, uh, Myers with 9, Ryan with 8, Pajot with 7, Brodeen with 4, Dehan with 3, Eakin with 1 in 4 games. I don't believe anyone's a minus. Well, actually, Point, Panarin, and Shear. Oddly enough, the first line are minuses, but no one else. Hmm. Uh, power play goals. Let's see. Four for Hamilton. Game winners. Three for Pajot, Kuleshov, and Homer. And let's see. Face-offs. 55 for Tatar on 20. Coleman with 50. Stasny with 49.5. Pajot, 48.8. Point, 48.6. Eakin, 48.6. Aho, 46.7. So if there's anywhere where we're struggling, it's face-offs. But we're, you know, we have a pretty good record at the moment. So I'm not touching a, a thing. Furland with 60 hits. Very nice. Takeaways and giveaways. Good, 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 good. Uh, good for a defenseman. Good. Uh, not too good for Sherry. He could work on that a little bit. Good. Uh, not too great for Stasny. He could be doing better. Good for Ajo. Not too great for Homer, but he is getting offense. Pajot could be better. Coleman could be better. Ryan could be better. A lot better, actually. Dahan, that's very good for Dahan. Yep, he's staying consistent with the ratio where I wanted him to, where we saw him 
uh, the th two out of the three years previous, and he's staying along those lines at the moment. Brodeen, good. Kuleshov, not too good, but he is getting shots towards the net. Uh, Myers, not good at all. Holy moly, 18 to 2. Uh, Eakin, 1 to nothing. And then fights, nothing. Goaltenders, Corey Schneider. If you could have those numbers in real life, uh, that would be that'd be great. But <laughs> he's uh, he's doing pretty well so far here in Wolfsburg. 931 save percentage and for Dell a 920. So we definitely picked up the right goaltenders in the offseason this year. All right, so let's get back to the simulation. We'll go all December because really no concerns at this point. We'll go to January and then we'll send out our scouts, presuming I can remember. And I'm going to make a mental note of that right now to send the scouts out just so that we don't have a, an abysmal draft. 3-1 loss against the Capitals, but we had a 3-0 win against the Arizona Coyotes. We'll check the draft class right before we send out the scout. Uh, Jersey, 3-2 win. There you go. 20 wins already for your Wolfsburg Wolves. And there's a win against the Columbus Blue Jackets as well. Edmonton, you're still bad. I don't know how you do it. But a 6-1 win against the Edmonton Oilers. No surprises there. <laughs> By the way, guys, I know I hate the Edmonton Oilers, okay? I know I, I rip on the Edmonton Oilers a lot, but that's because, like, it's just the, the failures has, have been mind-blowing. But John Gabriel Pajot has been injured with a herniated disc until March 20th. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so there's our fourth-line center for uh, gone for basically the rest of the season. So, Eakin... You're getting in there for right now, but we may have to consider a placement closer to the trade deadline. <laughs> but for right now, we'll keep things going. 3-1 loss to the LA Kings. Montreal, uh, shootout loss. Okay, so we're starting to drop here a little bit, but uh, not the worst thing in the world with our record currently. All right, so there's three in a row. If we lose two more in a row, I'm going to stop it. San Jose, especially against San Jose, they're not too good. Okay, there you go. 4-1 win. Good to get back on track. There you go. 2-1 win against Philly. 4-1 4 nothing win against the Vegas Golden Knights. So we're it's a little bit of a slide there, but we're looks like we're back on track at the moment. Florida shootout loss got a point. Can't complain too much. Final two games of the month. Uh, Yuri Voloshenko back spasms will just replace him for right now. He's not too good of a prospect anyway. Uh, Ottawa and Toronto. What do we have? We have a 3-1 win against the Ottawa Senators, and against Toronto, we have a 4-2 win. So we're back on track. No need to worry. 27, 6-3 are your Wolfsburg Wolves on January 1st. Let's see the Buffalo Sabres, actually. Oh, my God. 32-3. That is absolutely insane. I don't know. I don't know what kind of team Buffalo's put together there, but that that's absolutely ridiculous. I don't think I've ever seen that up to, you know, ha roughly halfway through the season. Only five losses. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, we have nine, a total of nine losses. I thought that was impressive, but geez, the Buffalo Sabres. That's, uh, that's quite ridiculous, actually. Again, I'm not sure if I've ever seen that. <laughs> Even in this game. So... Uh, let's take a look at the draft class and then we'll send out to the scout. So let's see what we have. Oduya is the first ranked player. Ludwig Oduya looks pretty solid. Griffin DeSantis also looks pretty solid. Marjamaki, Marge uh, again, all these top five guys, pretty solid. Jerome Couture, uh, yeah, pretty solid. I mean, he's not, I don't, I'm not sure if he's going to be NHL ready year one, but definitely by year two. Ludwig Gunnarsson, have nothing on him. Cashman looks pretty solid as well. Uh, even for a top four defenseman. Matthew Grossman as well. Pretty solid. Richie. Oh, yeah. Basically, if you're picking anywhere in the top ten, you can't go wrong. Uh, we have nothing on Denny Papen. Nothing on Lalim. Nothing on Yachina. Kavasha. Pretty good. I mean, he's probably like a low 70s, mid 60s type player. Navens, probably about the same. So if you're picking inside the top 10, though, you really can't go wrong with any of these picks, especially the, the top four. Okay, so it's it's pretty clear, though, that the scout isn't really doing his job. So we're going to have to manually assign the scouts 
uh, out to scout the junior players. So we'll start out with Russia here. And uh, I'll just do this really quick so that we're not wasting too much time on this. All right, that's all done. So let's get back to the simulation now. Because uh, really, nothing to change. We've been basically perfect. But the Buffalo Sabres, as you can see, are even more perfect. 32 and 3. That's absolutely insane. So let's go the rest of the month here. Up to the game against Dallas. I mean, we may as well go to the trade deadline, if not even the whole rest of the season at this point. Braden Point has been injured with a mild concussion until January 7th. That's not too long, luckily. But that does mean we have to move up Stasny. Uh, jeez, and I guess... You know what? I'm going to put Steen on the second line. He's been pretty solid down there on the fourth. Then you got Pickles, Eakin. And I guess that means we're going to... For right now, we're going to have to put... England. <laughs> as the 12th forward there with Pickles and Eakin. Yeah, okay. So... Considering the spot that we're in, at the trade deadline, we might, we might want to trade for some depth at the very late, at the very least, or maybe even a veteran, proven middle six, top six score even. So, Chicago, two nothing loss. Point is back, however, so we're gonna get him back in there. All right, points back in. Calgary, four three win. Buffalo, I'd be surprised if we went. Yeah, <laughs> she's two nothing loss to the Buffalo Sabers. They're insane. Carolina, let's see what we have here. Hopefully a win. Thirtieth of the season. Nope. Overtime loss. All right, we got a point out of it. Vancouver, another point. Overtime loss. Pittsburgh. There you go. Three one win. Thirty eight and five are your Wolfsburg Wolves. So definitely in a playoff position <laughs> for sure. Probably not the President's Trophy, though, at this point, because of the, uh, the you know, the Buffalo Sabres. But, I mean, I think we're pretty solid, so... Oh, man, and we plus we keep getting these all, all these injuries. I don't think it would be the worst idea in the world to make a trade. Just because, uh, one, of the amount of injuries we've been getting, and two, we don't really have too much depth up at, fr up at forward. Because we saw what that injury to point did. It forced Stasny to go to the first line and then Steen coming up to the second. Uh, we don't really have any good centers without point. At least at this, you know, moment in time while Ajo is still at 81. So I would think, yeah, center should probably be on our uh, wish list for the trade deadline. So I guess we'll stop it there. Once we get to the trade deadline, because I want you guys' suggestions on what we should do. I'll get Tatar on the shootout. And then we'll, have, we'll also check the trade block to see what centers are available. 4-1 loss against Nashville. 5-2 win against the New York Rangers. DeHaan in the fourth for sure. Well, I mean, speaking of centers, there's one right there. But I'm not willing to give up DeHaan for that. Definitely not DeHaan. He's, he's great with the turnovers. There you go. 5-1 win against Anaheim. 4-3 shootout win against the Minnesota Wild. Okay, so... Into February now. And we have not gotten to 10 regulation losses. So I think it's safe to say... At this point... That we'll be in the playoffs. For sure. It's just a matter of... What kind of record we end with. Now, Stasny... The interesting part about this... Is that... We're not getting a whole ton of scoring, it doesn't appear. At least from our top six. It, it appears to be more balanced. Yeah, because Panarin leads our team with 37 points in 48 games. So it's not like anyone's really particularly taking over. It's just everything, yeah, everything's spread out. Panarin, 37.35. Jones, 33. Ajo, 31. A homer, 29. Furland, 29. Hamilton, 28. Sherry 26. Steen, 26. Kuleshov 25, Stasny 25, Tatar 19, Ryan 15, Coleman Pickles 15, Pajot 20, uh, oh geez, 12, uh, Myers 12, Brodine 11, DeHaan 7, Eakin with 5 and 24 games, and Anglin in 5 games with nothing. Plus minus, plus 32 is Jones, 
and minus two is point. And then shots on goal. Let's see this. Homer with 151. Kuleshov with 145. Shooting percentage. Pajot with 22.7, although he's basically gone until playoffs. <laughs> so he, we're not really considering him as a, a factor at this moment. Uh, 20.5 for Stasny. On only 44 shots. So th this is what I mean. We're getting offense. It's just not coming from one particular player. As it's been, as you can see, very spread out. So I'm thinking maybe a top six, a solid veteran top six center would do this team very good in the playoffs. Because we're, we're in the playoffs at this point. There's no doubt about it. Unless we lose every single game from now on. And preferably a center that can take face-offs as well. Because Point is at a 51.3. Then Pajot, again, who's not available until basically playoffs, at a 50.9. Everyone else is below a 50%. So if we can get like an offensive center who's also good at face-offs, then I think we would be in business for the playoffs because that, that, be, that would be a huge help. That would really be a huge help for this team. So, but we will go up to the trade deadline here. I'm not going to make any trades now. We'll get up to, you know, we'll get up to whenever the trade deadline is. And then we'll reevaluate from there. But I, I really think that a center behind Braden Point so that we could send, you know, maybe Stasny to the third line or something instead of Ryan. And then have the fourth line be, for right now, Pickles, Eakin, and Ryan. Or we could even just take Eakin off completely and then put maybe put Stasny there and then put our new top six center in Stasny's current place. So we'll get up to the trade deadline and we'll reevaluate from there. But I, I really think that's what this team could use in the playoffs. So a couple of solid overtime losses there. Got two points versus Dallas and Tampa Bay. Boston, that is going to be a 2-1 win. Okay. Winnipeg, St. Louis, Arizona, uh, Berlin, and Carl Osner replace. There you go. Shootout win versus Winnipeg, division rival. St. Louis, also a division rival. Let's see what happens here. That is going to be an injury to Pickles until February 20th. So there goes another forward. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely going to need. I, I would say we're definitely going to need to trade for a center. So England. Yeah, no. England. Has to be the one in for right now. Because, <laughs> yeah, Eakin's already in there. And, yeah. So, the fourth line is now England, Eakin, and Steen. Ooh, Ryan's dropped to a 77. Yeah. Yeah. He he might be the one we end up replacing once Pajot gets back. Dehan and a sixth for a third and Hyman. No, thank you. I'll just make whatever trade we're going to make at the trade deadline. Carl Alsner, continue. So, uh, <laughs> three shootout wins in a row there against Winnipeg, St. Louis, and Arizona. Then you have a 2-1 win. First and DeHaan for a second, a third, and Ratty. Nope. One win to 40. Nope. Come on. There you go. Shootout, another shootout win. Jeez. We're going to a lot of uh, extra time games here. Blake Coleman is back. Pickles get back in the lineup. Don't need England at forward. All right, that's all better. Man, all these trades. <laughs> Columbus, we have a 7-4 loss. There is our 10th regulation loss of the season, and it took until February 18th. That's some significant improvement for this team. <laughs> Overtime loss against Edmonton and a 4-1 win against the LA Kings. So, again, unless we lose every single game from now on, I think it's pretty much guaranteed that we're making the playoffs this year. So I would say a trade at the trade deadline for a top six center is our number one thing. Uh, shootout loss against the Detroit Red Wings. And then against San Jose, we have another trade for Calvin Hahn. No, thank you. <laughs> San Jose, we have a slow simulation. Come on, we have a 3-1 regulation loss so that's a some some of a rarity happening a little bit more often these days and that's exactly why i think we should trade for a top six center here we are 41 12 
and nine at the trade deadline. Now, is it possible? We would... <laughs> I, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but we would need, over the next... Uh, over the last part of the season, we would only have to get one more loss. <laughs> Which I, I doubt is happening. It could. But I doubt it in order to get 60 wins. But regardless of what happens, <laughs> this has been an incredible run so far for the Wolfsburg Wolves. And I mean, Buffalo, they've kind of come back down to earth <laughs> with the rest of the league. 46, 11, and 5. They're still very good. But, uh, you know, they, the <laughs> the 70 win season isn't really much of a reality anymore for them. But 60, I would, I would guess, is, yeah, 60 is definitely possible for the Buffalo Sabres. <laughs> so anyway, let's take a look at the, tra like, yeah, see what I mean? The top scorer on our team is Seth Jones with 43 points at this point in the season. I mean, I guess it's all just either we're really good defensively or it's just complete, yeah, it's, I guess it's just a complete spreading out of the points going on here. Seth Jones with 43 points, Panarin with 41 Aho with 37, Point with 37, Steen with 36, Furland 36, Homer with 33, Kuleshov 32, Hamilton 32, Stasny 29, Shiri 28, Tatar 25, Myers 20, Pickles 17, Ryan 15, Brodine 14, Pajot 12, Eakin 11, Dehan 9, and Engeland with nothing in 9 games. Plus minus, Jones with plus 35. Uh, point is a minus eight. So that's very, very interesting that the only minus players are Panarin and Point. <laughs> that's that's very interesting, actually. Shots, 200 for Maddox Homer, 185 for Kuleshov, 169 for Ajo. So all three of our draft picks doing very well so far this season. All plus 30 points. Cannot complain from them. Shooting percentage, again, Pajo is basically out to the playoffs. Stasny, 17.5. Eakin, 16.3. Tatar, 16%. Ryan, 12.7. Shiri, 12.5. Let's take a look at faceoffs. I mean, Eakin's gotten better there. Point, 51.7. Pajot, uh, Stasny, 50%. Yeah, we definitely need a, a center who could take faceoffs and he was good offensively. Hits, 147 for Furland, 88 for Jones. Another thing we could use is a, is a physical presence, maybe down there for the bottom six, because there's Pajot with six, then there's Eakin with 12, Stasny, 26, Steen, 33. He looks like he's dropped off physically. Ryan, 38. I mean, you're not going to expect Ryan to hit no matter what, but uh, I mean, he's dropped off significantly in terms of his overall 77 now, .38. Or 39, rather. So maybe I would say a physical forward for our bottom six and a top six center would do us some very, it would do us some good things for this team. Takeaways and giveaways. Furland, good. Panarin, good. Point, good. Good, 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 good. Uh, good for Jones. Good for, very good for Hamilton. Stasny could be better. Brodine, good. Uh, Tatar good. Coleman could be much better. Ryan could be... Oh, geez. Ryan. 52 to 24. That's abysmal. Uh, Kuleshov. I mean, he's getting offense, so fair enough. Good. Myers, 52 to 19. Not favorable. Dehan. I mean, his ratio has gotten a little bit up there compared to what he's used to. But it's still pretty solid for a defenseman. Eakin... Could be a lot better. Pajot, uh, I mean, he hasn't played since, like, November, so <laughs> not really going to judge him at the moment. And England, 4-12. to 12. Fights, still nothing, really. Okay, goaltenders. Uh, yeah, Schneider and Dell have been doing just fine. So none of this is a goaltender problem, obviously. I, I think our issues lie within physicality in the bottom six and the top six scoring center. So, let's take a look at the trade block now to see what we can find. So, Anaheim, nothing. Arizona, nothing. Boston, Savard, Moore, Foligno, 
Not really. I mean, I'm maybe Felino for the physical part of it. Two years left, though, as a 34-year-old. Not sure how I feel about that. How many hits does he have? Uh, 78. Not bad. Definitely an improvement for our bottom six, I would say. We'll keep looking, though. Not my, not the best option we have here. Buffalo, nothing. Calgary, nothing. Carolina, nothing. Well, there is... Hold on. <laughs> there is Kapitanov here. Stanislav Kapitanov. But we're looking for veterans here. Chicago, Bergeron. Ooh, Bergeron. Two years left at 7.3. 36 years of age, so he's definitely going to trail off fast. 38 hits. He's not much of a hitter, but he is a, definitely a face-off winner. We know that much. Uh, takeaways to giveaways. Actually, he's given away the puck quite a bit compared to takeaways. But just for the fa even if just for the face-offs and uh, depth scoring, Bergeron might not be a bad idea. 86 overall. Pareko. I mean, we don't really need defense, to be honest. I, I think our current defense, our defensive core as it is, is pretty good. Yeah, we don't need Pareko. Maybe he's sod for the physical part. Is he physical? 26 points, 76 hits. Oh, yeah, he's physical. Got a good ratio there as well. So maybe sod. But it is worth noting that he has a three year contract 5.1. I don't know if I would want. Yeah, I don't I don't think I would want Saad for the bottom six at that much money for the next three or two and a half years. We'll keep looking. Colorado, nope, no one. Columbus, Wenberg. Whew. Wenberg is available, apparently. Let's see, 54% on faceoffs. Great ratio right there. 95 to 33. 65 hits, so it's not terrible physically either. 36 points. Hmm. Columbus wants to give up Wenberg, huh? Let's see. What would it cost to trade for Wenberg? Probably, I would I mean, I would imagine a lot. So this would probably have to include Rodin and Vertanen and Kundratek or something like along those lines and maybe even a draft pick as well. So I'm not going to make any trades this episode. I want your guys' feedback. But... If we really want to go for it, we could technically trade for Wenberg. But again, uh, a package for Wenberg would probably have to include Rodin, uh, a first round pick, and then probably another couple of prospects such as Vertanen and Kundratek and Williams maybe. So let me know what you, if that would be a good trade. De definitely an interesting one. But uh, is it worth giving up the amount of value that Columbus would want? for Wenberg, especially when we already have someone such as uh, Yorgaho coming up soon, and then Braden Point as our first line center currently. Or do we move Point down to the second, acquire Wenberg, and then maybe once Aho is ready to make the jump to the first line, move Wenberg to the wing or something like that, you know? But then again, that'd be Maddox Homer and Artemi Panarin. So what do you do there? Uh, let me know on Wenberg. Dallas... Let's see. Dallas, nothing. Detroit, nothing. Edmonton, <laughs> Lucic. I mean, it's not bad just because of the one year contract. And he would fit into the category of a physical bottom six forward. 93 hits. Yeah, honestly, I wouldn't be opposed to Lucic just because his contract is only at one year. I definitely wouldn't be re signing him for that much. <laughs> that's for sure. But uh, maybe one year for. Uh, yeah, just get Lucic for the rest of this year plus the playoffs. I, I think he would be a solid presence in our bottom six. I really do. Florida, nothing. LA, ooh, Radulov. <laughs> Radulov for that little value at an 89 overall. I mean, if we're really looking to get some depth scoring here, <laughs> I mean, and he's physical as well. So Radulov is definitely an option, but he's not a center, keep in mind. We're looking for centers here. Uh, but if we if we do want a winger, especially to replace someone like Ryan, ooh, that might not be that might not be a bad idea now that I thought of that. Uh, Carter, or uh, geez, not Carter, Coyle. <laughs> uh, 21 points, 30 years of age. 
67 hits. Doesn't have a great face-off percentage. Great with the takeaways to giveaways, though. I'm not sure I would want to pay him that much as a third-line scorer, though. Carter, Kolchak, Saboka. I follow. I really like the idea of Lucic as a as a power forward for the bottom six. I really do. And then maybe Radulov to replace Ryan if we have to. And then I'm just trying to think here as to what we could do. Uh, but we we still haven't found a clear center yet. Besides Vanberg, of course, if you guys want to try to trade for that. But uh, I'm going to keep looking here because Vanberg is quite a, quite the package going the other way. <laughs> Jack Hughes. <laughs> as I say it about Alexander Wenberg, Jack Hughes is apparently available as well. Maybe he doesn't want to resign. Maybe that's it. Yeah, he probably. My guess is that Hughes doesn't want to resign with <laughs> with Minnesota, and because he's a created player, he's going to be a UFA this year. Yeah, that would make sense. But wow, that's that's a huge package <laughs> if we're trading for uh, Jack Hughes. Brayton Shen, he might not be a bad idea either if we're looking to go on the cheaper side. He's physical as well. Good with the giveaways to takeaways. Not great faceoff wise, but definitely a pretty good center. So Brayden Shen is an option. Zucker, I, I liked Radulov better for a winger. Uh, and then as well as Lucic. So Lucic, Radulov. Maybe Wemberg, maybe Shen. We have a lot of options here. We really do. It's just a matter of which, which ones do we want to trade for. Nashville, Merrill, Williams, Wilson. Nope. New Jersey, nope. Islanders, Vanek, Gurgisson, nope. Rangers, nope. Ottawa, nope. 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 Uh, Smith. I would rather have Radulov. <laughs> St. Louis, Granlund. Mikhail Granlund. 36 points. Good face-off taker. 41 hits. Yeah, he's not a bad option either. I think if it were between him and Shen, I think I would honestly rather take Granlund. He is on quite the contract, though. 30 years of age, 5 years left at 6.7, so... We have to think, can we afford that? And if the answer is yes, then we may try to go for Grandland. Tampa, nope, nothing. Toronto, nothing. Vancouver, they have Prokerin. He's injured, and he's an elite prospect. So I'll, I'll leave him be. Vegas, nothing. Washington, nothing. Winnipeg, nothing. Okay, so you guys have seen the trade block. You guys have seen our record. We're definitely a playoff team. But you, also, you guys have also seen what this team may need. So let me know in the comments what we should do as far as trades. Or if we should make a trade. Maybe we don't make a trade. You guys gotta let me know. See you guys in the next one when we finish off. Year number four, I believe it is. Kind of lost track. <laughs> See you guys in the next one.